Hola, buenos días, soy Nico. Gays, beware of this man. He's a dangerous, violent scammer. I'm about to tell you the story about how a three week vacation romance turned into me getting held hostage in my own Airbnb. I'll kill you! Assaulted. Stop, I don't want to fight. I just want to take my stuff and leave. Get out there! Can you get out so that I. No! Put the foot down! No, won't! Robbed of about $2,000. And a lot of other shit. I mean literal shit. So I'm 22 years old. I've never been in a relationship before. And I went to this music festival in Barcelona a few weeks ago. I met this 40 year old OnlyFans creator. I'm also an OnlyFans creator. And the first night we went to a party together, we really hit it off. That same night, he asked me to be his boyfriend. I was very vulnerable at the time. This felt like a fairy tale romance. I said yes. The next day, he told me that he was in love with me. By the third day, he asked me to go live with him in Brazil. And so I told him, I'm here in Europe for about two months. So maybe we should try staying together here in Europe before I go somewhere like Brazil. And I really thought that this man was the one. So by the end of the first week, things started to turn really sour. Keep in mind, we both do OnlyFans. I was editing a video in the same living room that he was in. He said that was extremely disrespectful. He completely like just blew up. I immediately shut my computer off and I apologized. I said, I didn't know that this would bother you. Now that I see that it does, I won't do it again. He exploded on me the entire day, like he just would not let this go. But by the end of the night, we did resolve things and he decided to come to Madrid with me. In Madrid, things started to go even worse. He started accusing me of things and saying that I'm manipulative. He said that I was singing in the shower on purpose to wake him up. He started to go on rants about how malnourished I look and how I'm too skinny and I dress too feminine. He was talking about his ex all day. I mean, most of the times he was talking shit, but at some point he even defended his ex saying that he's one of the best porn stars in the world. There was one night where we went out to the club with this other OnlyFans guy. I ended up going home around 5 a.m. and they stayed out together. Now he didn't come back until like 1 p.m. He said because it was to punish me for leaving early and for not wanting to take off my shirt in the club. At this point we were arguing every single day so we decided to break up. Uh, but he was still staying with me a few more days, so we decided to keep it friendly. So at one point, he went out with the same OnlyFans guy and didn't come back until like 3 p.m. And then it was the last day he was there, which is when things went down. So the very last day, I'm out exploring the city by myself, and I get a bunch of text messages where he's accusing me of using him for money. And he starts to list all these things that I owe him, like 160 for our first date, lube that I used once, for a collab that he filmed. He's charging me for using a scoop of his protein powder. He's charging me for ruining this Louis Vuitton bag because there's a scratch right there. I didn't even want to wear that bag in the first place. He told me to wear that bag because my bag looked cheap and he didn't want to be seen walking around with me and that bag. He even accused me of stealing his Emodium and he was charging me for it. <laughs> He said I was seeking attention because I posted a song by FKA Twigs on Instagram. So at this point, I'm outside on FaceTime with my friends Dom Beef and Eric Prince, and I get this message. So I start running back to the apartment, and as soon as I get in the apartment, I'm held hostage. And Eric recorded the whole thing, part two coming soon. And today, we are here to talk about something fairly serious that 
we've slightly addressed in the past, which is age gap relationships and how they can be predatory and dangerous for the younger party majority of the time. And I'm disappointed because when this story broke on social media, with all the progress we've come with, let's say, the Grayling situation where we saw how someone who was older was blatantly taking advantage of younger people and using them for a monetary gain. We acknowledge that that was problematic and we could see the science in that dynamic. But when it came to Locke coming online and expressing how he had met a far older man in a foreign country because he was traveling the world who basically love bombed him and trapped him into a relationship that quickly became abusive financially, physically, emotionally, etc and then brought receipts because it's not like the boy like came on here and made shit up he brought receipts too everybody turned towards him the 23 year old being taken advantage of by a 40 something year old and said you didn't see the signs but you did it you indulged you you decided to pursue a relationship with this man why didn't you pick better and don't crucify me <laughs> because i was sitting down thinking why don't you pick better? That's the same dialogue that a lot of black women and women of color are met with when they discuss how they were abused by their partner, how they were taken advantage of, how they were abandoned with a child. Why didn't you pick better? So in this situation, I really want to know what Locke was supposed to do different because he met this person at a music festival in a foreign country. They proceeded to dance and talk all night, and at the end of the night, the far older, wealthy, and quote-unquote attractive, the man is ripped and chiseled face, asked him to be his boyfriend. Locke is 23. He expressed in his close friends how this is his first relationship. He's never been in a relationship before. So he was being love-bombed and pursued by someone far older, fairly attractive, and far more wealthy in a foreign country during a trip. He was swept in the moment and said yes. So when Diago suggested that they go back to Brazil, Locke said, I'm already going to be in Europe. Why don't you just come with me to Madrid? Boom, bam, they set up the date. They went and everything was fine for the most part. So at this point, he's being love bombed and he's being showered with praise, especially because they are both in the same industry. They both do OnlyFans. So at this point, things are beginning to turn sour because since they both do OnlyFans, Locke decided, okay, well, I'm just going to edit this collab that you were actually there for. You were the cameraman. I'm going to edit it here and we can just do our things afterwards. Diago was offended that he decided to edit an OnlyFans clip in front of him when they both do OnlyFans because it was a sign of disrespect. Locke said the situation escalated. He continued to yell at me and eventually it went back to normal until things went left. They went to a party and Locke decided to come home at 5 a.m. because he said, I'm tired, we've been dancing all night, I'll see you back at the Airbnb. So Thiago decided not to come back until I believe 1 p.m. And when he came back, he told Locke that it was because he had to be punished for leaving the party early and not taking his shirt off, so he decided to stay out late. And the rage began. So, from that point on to the end of the trip, I'll fast forward because I'm going to insert the videos. I just like to give a synopsis in case you don't want to sit through eight to 10 minutes worth of dialogue. Basically, from that point, Thiago began to threaten him and go off on him to the point that Locke said, OK, I'll just leave and you can just stay in the Airbnb that I rented because it's not worth it. And when he said that, Diago began to threaten him by saying, oh, I'll just cut up your Prada shoes and I'll destroy your things until you come back. So Locke came back and he actually was on the phone with his friends telling them to call the police and one of them was recording the dialogue. That's why there are no visuals because the phone was in his pocket because if the phone was out recording, Diago might have gotten physical, which he had already threatened to do, by the way. In this little spat, quote unquote little spat, Diago had destroyed his products, and then he threw them all into a trash can and defecated into the trash can. Nico, what does that mean? He took a dump on this boy's belongings after he had already trashed them and thrown them in the trash, and then he began to threaten him with a fork. Nico, a lot of people were making jokes about being threatened with a fork. 
you can lose an eye, you can have your jugular punctured, you can be seriously harmed with a sharp metal object. Like, I don't understand why everybody was kicking and laughing like you cannot be seriously harmed with a sharp metal object from an extremely muscular man. Like, I was watching this play out and just the lack of sympathy and care in this entire dialogue made me lose a lot of faith in our community. Not even because I'm like, okay, we all got to rally together because we hear something. Girl, there's proof. Like, there's audio, there's text messages of him being extorted. Basically saying, if you don't pay me what you owe me, I'm going to destroy your things. And then he did it anyway. So basically, he robbed this young boy in a different country, threatened to assault him with a, with a weapon. And y'all are just laughing at him. Saying you should have seen the signs. Because that's the thing a lot of y'all don't understand. I have seen so many messages from gay people saying, I have never been on a date and I'm in my 30s. I have never been in a relationship and I'm in my late 20s and I'm feeling like something is wrong with me. This is this boy's first relationship. He does not see the red signs like people who, like me, let's, let's say for example, who has dated around. I've dated casually since I was like 19. You know, men and women, for the most part men, so I have a good understanding of red flag. If this is your first relationship at 23, you're not going to know what love bombing feels like. You're not going to know that you should be looking out for someone trying to attach themselves to you too quickly. But if you did not believe Look, even though I'm going to insert both of his videos after this commentary, I'm going to get on to Josh Moore, who is Thiago's ex, who came forth and made a nine minute long video, basically confirming the accusations Locke is making against him by telling his own recounts. So I'm going to say allegedly, in between all of this because even though we have proof i'm not getting sued part two of the story um i'm just gonna start off by addressing the elephant in the room after he left i was able to get back into my airbnb and i thought he stole some of my things then i quickly realized he threw my things in a trash can then proceeded to take a shit on top of those things this is how much I sent him. I'm in the process of getting it back. For the fight, I had already agreed to refunding him his part of the Airbnb. And I told him if he told me how much Louis Vuitton would charge him for the bag, I'd pay for it. Also, my friends did call the police. Um, again, I was on FaceTime with them when this happened. I had my phone in my pocket and AirPods in. And they decided to record the whole thing. That's the only reason I have audio. I left before they were able to call the police for them to get there. So like I said, the day of the fight, I was outside on FaceTime with my friends and then I got this message about my Prada shoes. So I ran back inside. When I got inside, he he ran up to the door. He was like already ex like enraged. He was ready to fight. I'll kill you. I blocked him from opening the closet because he wanted to ruin my shoes um, and he just kept yelling at me and at one point he grabbed a fork and got really close to me he pushed me onto the kitchen table then he wouldn't let me leave until i sent him all this money and he kept adding more and more things i'm sending you 351 right now in the moment i just wanted to get out of the situation I didn't want to fight somebody that I thought cared for me. Eventually I sent him money and he let me pack my things. I did leave a few things behind that didn't fit my suitcase. I was about to leave and he started accusing me of stealing his Imodium. Uh, when I yelled back that I didn't, I showed him my own Imodium. He threw water in my face. At that point, I just grabbed my things and left. When I got back into the apartment, this is what I found. Oh my God, this is so petty. He literally destroyed this. Which bag? Looks like it was fucked up on purpose. My bunny bag or this? So I realized he didn't steal my things. Um, he just threw them in the garbage. But I'm going through this trash can and he shit. He literally shit. In this bag, he, that shit. 
Look, I know this is probably due to a mental illness or a drug use on his end, but the moment he got aggressive and he shit on my things, I just couldn't stay quiet. I think the reason I fell so hard in the beginning is because we have a similar lifestyle, so it would be very possible with the right person. Red flags are usually obvious to me, but in this occasion, I didn't see an incentive on his part because he had the platform, he has money, he has the apparent stability. It just didn't feel like he would do something like this. Either way, I know nothing that I did deserved this mess. And that's all I have to say. Oh, and the full recorded part is about 12 minutes, but here are some clips. Stop! Let's stop with what it is! You. We need to get out of here! I will! I'll kill you! I'll you! I want to see you! I want to see you! I So, you just saw what Locke had to say in both videos, basically showing that he was being extorted and threatened in real time, and all he really wanted to do was leave and have his things, and even told the man he could stay in the Airbnb that he rented. He's better than me, because I would have told him to get his ass out. But yes, Josh Moore basically released a nine minute long statement where he came forward about being involved with Thiago and basically saying that he is as violent and narcissistic as this story makes it seem. He was essentially love bombed as well when they first began meeting and after three months of paradise, it slowly began to deteriorate as Thiago's temper and his jealousy took the forefront. He said at that point, whenever somebody would come out to speak to him in public, he would tell them F off, move on. And while he was at a party with his friend, was at his straight friend's party, he was talking to one of his straight old time friends from his hometown and Thiago did not appreciate that. So he stormed off into the streets and began to curse him out and threaten him. And Josh was saying that he was in love with him and that that wasn't the case. And this guy is straight. I'm just talking to an old friend at the bar at this straight event with my straight friends. And he continued to go off until the matter was eventually settled. After that, Josh continued to say that they were at a party where Thiago continuously told people to keep it moving whenever they would try to talk to him. So when Josh went outside to smoke at the smoking section, he had gotten to a small conversation with the guy who was smoking outside. He had asked him where he got his pants and Josh said, oh, I, I got them from so-and-so or I don't remember that detail. I did not remember. <laughs> and... Thiago basically stormed off into the street saying, you didn't tell him to go to hell when you were talking to him. You sat up there and talked to him in my face while you were smoking. And then he began to hit him. Allegedly, he began to hit him in the face. And Josh was saying, I love you. What are you doing? Like, why are you hitting me? I, it wasn't anything like that. You have this situation confused. And then he hit him again to the point that his teeth were bleeding and they felt wobbly. And then he stormed off and threw a series of texts Thiago basically confirmed that yes I did hit you I don't care I'm gonna go find somebody to smush on because you want to talk to that guy it's not even that big of a deal you can go back to your place I'm not coming back and it just goes to show you the narcissistic personality this person has to have to first and foremost assault your boyfriend of three months and then to tell them okay well I'm gonna go sleep with somebody anyway so it doesn't matter go do what you want to do after you leave them bloody in the street so now that we have two accounts names because we all know who it is and this person loves to call the police and get lawyers involved and just yeah so I'm not gonna implicate myself in any name dropping but we all know who I'm talking about <clears throat> and um, in recent light of uh, this young boy's 
coming out of um, with the details of this person's behavior and um, yeah, his treatment of this boy, I feel like it's necessary for me to, you know, say something. And let me tell you the first reason why I never said anything in the first place. One, I guess it was out of fear. Um, he's, this guy still lived in my uh, city. So I was scared he's one of those people that would turn up at your door. And he knew where I lived, but he lived with me for, for a, an extended period of time. So yeah, I was, I was worried at first. Um, he had smashed the window of my car before and, and yeah. Anyway, and the, and, and the other reason I didn't say anything is because when someone, when I split out with him, he then proceeded to pretend that he had cancer and posted it all online and then told everyone I left him after I found out his diagnosis. So imagine being me and then uh, this person's all online talking about poor me, I have cancer. Um, and then I come out and say, this person's a, a horrible person. He's done this, this and this. Like, I'm just gonna, yeah, I wasn't gonna do that. I wasn't gonna, <clears throat> you know, um, it just didn't seem like the right move for me, even though I would have loved to tell people or warn people. I mean, one, it's not my responsibility to warn people about someone else. And two, I was dealing with a lot, a lot of depression and trauma, um, and I really didn't even feel like speaking about it anyway. <clears throat> but I didn't want people to think I'm some kind of monster going after a cancer patient, um, which miraculously recovered four months later. Um, and it's just very coincidental that he got diagnosed like a week after I split out with him. Um, after going to A&E, which I'm not sure is possible, um, I thought there was a much longer wait to get a appointment for a diagnosis like that, but you know, Delulu. Um, yeah, so we went through a well in relationship. I met him um, and it was all amazing at, at the start. And um, I, uh, we were probably about three months in and I was totally in love with him and Basically, as soon as we started in a relationship, he, he expressed that he wanted to, always wanted to do OnlyFans. And I was like, okay, that's, that's cool, great, because I do OnlyFans and I can help with that. Um, at the time, obviously, now I look back at it, I think, well, did he just use me the whole time to make, you know, to, to do that, you know, to get big on OnlyFans or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and then we went to my friend's birthday um, a girl and um, this was the first night that I kind of saw who he truly was and, and it was kind of three months in I was already totally in love with him um, and then we went to my friend's birthday we were on a night out I was speaking to someone from my hometown he's a guy who's straight and we were chatting for like probably about 20, 20 minutes just sitting down in this bar and all the girls were dancing and he was dancing with them and and I was just talking to this guy because we haven't seen each other in ages and he's a straight guy, he's an old friend from my hometown. And um, he comes over and he literally just shouts at me and then storms out and I'm like, oh my God, what, what have I done wrong? It was just really wild anyway. So he's screaming at me and then he's, calling me on the phone like I'm leaving and we're in like the middle of nowhere in my hometown and he's like I'm going back to London and um, I was thinking this is crazy um, what 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 the hell did I do I didn't do anything wrong and then he was like um, I found him in the street and he was screaming at me and then he literally I was with one of my girlfriends and that's the first time he pushed me and he was just going crazy all night and um, and then basically we got back to the Airbnb we were staying at and he refused to like, open the door and he s slept in the room all night and I slept upstairs. And then 
the next day he made me apologize for something that I didn't do. Um, and that was kind of the first time I was like, wow, um, I love this guy, but that was a bit much. Anyway, I think I would have learned from that, but it just continued to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And people always say to me like, oh, why didn't you, why didn't you just leave him? Like you should have leave, left him at the red flags. Well, you don't understand like, what people don't understand is like the manipulation and if you're in love with someone um, and they manipulate you in this way it's it's very narcissistic manipulation and it it's so difficult because they build you up to feel the most amazing you've ever felt and they literally they take you out like to the most amazing meals and like they serenade you like the most romantic gestures and they're like the perfect person for a time and then what they do is they just rip it all away from underneath you and they make you feel like you're the worst person ever until you beg for them back um, and s start saying sorry for stuff you've never even done um, and it's this 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 vicious circle of like manipulation where it's like they build you up to the highest of heights and then they just rip the, the tablecloth from underneath you and and you're just left um, feeling totally like helpless and worthless without them and I think people don't really understand the, the psychology behind that kind of manipulation and and why people would be like why would you stay with them well it, it's literal manipulation and, and gaslighting and it's very difficult it's like a like an addiction you know it gives you the dopamine high and then you get that crash and you just need more um, <clears throat> and that's kind of why and then he started to physically, uh, he hit me like three times, I think, in the relationship. Um, the first time was, all of the times, you know, was not warranted at all, but he made me feel like I deserved it. And that was the worst part because we were just out at a club night once and seriously, anyone who would say hello to me, he'd be like, fuck off. Um, and I would be appalled because like, I'd be like, oh my God, I'd be so embarrassed because I'm like a polite person. I like to say hello to anyone and everyone. Um, but he would just turn around and be like, fuck off to anyone, like any guy who would say hello to me who didn't, who he didn't know. Um, and then this guy literally just, we were talking in the smoking area and this guy literally just, just touched my trousers and they were leather trousers. And he goes, are you not hot in those? And I said, no, I'm not, I'm not hot, I'm fine. And by the time, I had said that, I turned around and he had stormed out and I ran after him and I was like, what, what's wrong? And he was like, fuck off, um, like screaming at me. And we got outside and he was like, you were flirting with that guy. You didn't tell him to fuck off. You didn't tell him to get off of you. Um, and then that was the first time that he hit me, literally just out of nowhere, just like bam in my face. And I was just like the most shocked I've ever been. Like for someone who, who you think loves you to do that and you're I was literally like why have you done that like I was crying and I was like please like I love you and all shit like that and then as I was saying that he did it again and the the like the the malice in his eyes was just I've never seen anything like it uh anyway I'm gonna have to make a part two with this violent man and his history are y'all going to apologize to Locke? Because the lack of sympathy and understanding for a younger party being taken advantage of in a different country, I was just so caught off guard. Genuinely caught off guard because I'm seeing like nasty think pieces and responses from bitches in their 30s. Bitches, like the bitches who should be old enough to know better. Nico, I'm 27. And I instantly realized, oh, he just got manipulated. Oh, this is a serious situation. This is a victim. And y'all are sitting here thinking, well, what did you do? Why didn't you see this coming? You're not a victim. He's the victim. It's like, if you're like, I don't understand the point of hearing this monstrous activity from now two people and choosing to attack the victim rather than the man assaulting people, extorting them, shitting on their belongings. Like, I'm at a loss for words, but yes, 
Definitely drop your opinions down below. Did you see all of this when this was happening? Did you see the think pieces that were forming of the people blaming him? Do you believe that Locke should have some personal responsibility, even though he's already taken it? Nico, he's already taken personal responsibility in the video. That's why I'm like, what more do you want him to say? <laughs> like, he's already said, I should have seen the red signs. It did move quickly. What do you want him to say beyond he was taken advantage of and he acknowledges that he was a little naive because i'm not understanding like why he got so much pushback when he simply opened up about being taken advantage of which we've seen time and time again when it was the grayling situation yes y'all kikied about the niggas getting his name tattooed on his face but aside from that y'all acknowledge he is targeting young individuals to take advantage of them why is it now in this situation that y'all forget that dynamic but i'm gonna stop ranting this is already gonna be like a 20 something minute long video but i definitely want your opinions down below and genuinely i wish josh and luck peace and healing because what Thiago allegedly did to them i have to say allegedly once again even though we have proof it's not okay and i'm glad that they're calling him out and putting him on blast but yes i'll see you guys next time I'm done for today. Boop. And a brief yet sincere shout out to this week's Third Eye Tier subscribers, Gianni R and Asan. Your continued support is greatly appreciated and thank you once again for everyone who supports the channel. And this week's live stream will be over red flags and relationships. If that sounds interesting to you, then definitely tune in. And once again, I hope everybody is safe and takes care of themselves. And I hope you enjoy your weekend.